Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Administrator's Daily Briefing. My name is Jacqueline Rothenberg. I am the Director of Public Affairs. Before I turn it over to the Administrator, I just want to remind you that this is being recorded, and this will be used for attribution. Administrator, over to you. We'll do questions after. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline. Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I'm here in the village of Chimney Rock in Western North Carolina, and I had an opportunity to meet with the mayor and hear his story about how this community was so impacted by the raging floodwaters. I also had an opportunity to walk down their main street and see volunteers and our military personnel, the soldiers that have been helping to clean out many of the businesses that have been impacted. And the mayor shared with me a story about how he has had architects in here already to talk about what the new Chimney Rock is going to look like. And they are actively working to clean up this community while they're designing how they're going to rebuild and rebuilding in a way that's gonna make them more resilient. Over the past three weeks, I, as well as the rest of my team, we have been across the state. We have met um, many people from much of the Southwest region assessing impacts from both hurricanes, Helene and Milton. I've seen catastrophic and heartbreaking damage. I have met with uh, survivors. I have heard their stories, but these are stories that embody grace, strength, and resilience. I've also heard stories of hope and promise for a better tomorrow. And I know I've talked to you in the past, in the last few days, about all of the work FEMA and our federal partners are doing. But today, I just want to share some of these stories, a small bit of what I've seen in all of these communities that I've visited with. When I first touched down in Asheville um, at the airport on October 1st, I was truly taken aback by the profound impacts. I have been an emergency manager for decades. I have been a local emergency I've seen and worked many complex events, and it was immediately clear that this would be one of the most complicated I've seen. But as Governor Cooper has said, Helene was an unprecedented event that requires an unprecedented response, and that is exactly what I saw that first day at the Asheville airport. Not only were traditional resources like the National Guard and the state and local responders fiercely engaged in helping the communities impacted, but there were also dozens of volunteers, neighbors, family, and friends, a reminder that while disasters can do their worst, they also bring out our best. I learned about a Maryland National Guard team that while on mission to deliver commodities, spotted and rescued over 20 people and six dogs. Not only did they relocate all of them, but after they knew they were safe, they continued on and completed their mission. And I listened to the emotional story of the early hours of response from a fire chief in Black Mountain. He told me how they worked outside the box, doing everything they could to rescue their friends and their neighbors in the dark with no or limited communications and limited fuel. And they told me how they were able to stabilize the situation through a partnership with the county emergency manager who was able to bring in extra hands when they needed it most. People helping people. This has been a recurring theme every stop that I've made during my visits here. Whether it's volunteer organizations, neighbors, friends or family, local fire departments or federal responders here on the ground, it's the people who make all of the difference. I met a couple from Pennsylvania who came all the way down to Yancey County, North Carolina, just to volunteer. You see, they had suffered losses from a storm back home many years ago, and they had felt the warmth of the community coming together to help them, and they decided that they wanted to pay it forward. I met an incident manager from Washington State who deployed through our Emergency Management Assistance Compact, or EMAC, to Western North Carolina. He was there to help coordinate recovery efforts, something he had also done in Lahaina after the Maui fires last year. I met a public information officer from Ohio who has also deployed through EMAC. She was helping out in Virginia, ensuring survivors were getting the information and the assistance that they needed to get back on their feet. And I spoke to a retired firefighter in Siesta Key, Florida, who filled a cart with water and fuel to hand out to those who needed it. And he was, in his words, just one person trying to help. 
The road to recovery for these communities will be long, but I want what I want you to know is in what I've seen is that we are truly all in this together. The stories I've heard from the selfless individuals here on the ground helping one another bring me tremendous hope, hope for what this recovery can and should mean for these communities. I have also been inspired by the stories of resilience that I've heard along the way. For example, I visited a, fire, a firehouse in Collettesville, North Carolina earlier this week. They had used FEMA hazard mitigation grant funding to relocate their fire station away from the river and up onto a hill back in 2006. Taking that step nearly two decades ago kept their fire station dry, functional, and most importantly, allowed their team to meet the moment and save lives when Helene hit their community. This is what the goal is. This is what helping people before, during, and after disasters is all about. To not just get people back on their feet, but to, but to set them up for success. To not just repair communities, but build them back more resilient for future incidents. This is what we at FEMA do. It is our mission and our commitment to all of those that have been affected by these historic storms. And as I've told Governor Cooper and the governors of all the states impacted, we will be alongside them for as long as it takes. And with that, Jacqueline, I'll turn it back to you for questions. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, everyone. Um, I will now open it up to questions from the media. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll call on you if you could state your name and your outlet. It's okay if there are no questions. Luke, do you have any questions? I knew you were going to ask a question, Luke. All right. Yeah, yeah. First question goes to Luke, and then we'll go to Drew. Hi, Administrator. It's Luke uh, Barr from ABC. Um, I, I wanted to ask, uh, do you have an update on the amount of people uh, who are missing? I know the governor said the other day it was 92, but do you have an update, uh, updated tally? Uh, that would be something, Luke, that you'd have to get from the governor. Uh, they are the ones through the Department of Health that are tracking that. Um, I wouldn't want to say a number that isn't correct or accurate, and they would have the most updated information. Thank you so much. Next question goes to Drew. Uh, yes, good afternoon. This is Drew Friedman with Federal News Network. Uh, I saw just earlier today that the Office of Personnel Management authorized uh, an emergency hiring authority to help respond uh, from FEMA during this year's hurricane season. I was wondering if FEMA was planning to take advantage of that new hiring authority and maybe onboard uh, more employees for those uh, response and recovery efforts. Um, I haven't seen the uh, the emergency hiring authority that you're speaking of specifically, but what I can tell you is that we have great flexibility to hire immediately in support of disaster response. And one of the big things that we do is we hire local hires. We can hire people right from the community that have been impacted, many of them who perhaps have lost their jobs temporarily as the community recovers. And we have already put several job postings out in certain parts of Western North Carolina. We'll be putting more out. And it's really you know, we find that some of our longstanding employees and some of our best employees started out as a local hire in a community that was impacted. They become reservists or part of our long-term uh, workforce. And so we use every flexibility within our hiring authorities to help meet the community's needs. Thank you, Drew. Any other questions from members of the media? Oh. Go ahead, Luke. It's okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, I, uh, there was a law enforcement bulletin that went out today from um, the partners at INA about threats to FEMA workers. I was wondering if you have any comment on the law enforcement bulletin generally, and then just kind of what does it say about the sort of where we are in the environment where INA has to issue law enforcement bulletins about, you know, threats to FEMA workers? Look, what I can tell you is I've been here in Chimney Rock today. I was in Lake Lure earlier meeting with the mayor of both of these communities, which is where part of the concern we had last week was. And what I can tell you is that these communities need our help and we are going to continue to be here side by side with them. And they have been so gracious and so complimentary of the work that we are doing. Um, and so, again, it just gives me great hope to know that the folks that we have in here are making a difference in these communities. It is still heartbreaking to see that there are 
you know, other individuals that aren't even right here in these towns that need help, you know, creating an environment of harassment um, that creates, you know, negative connotations towards not just my workforce, but others. And what I heard from the mayors of these communities is that it really impacts them personally to know that people are saying that members of their own community don't want us here when it's completely untrue and they welcome us being here. So as we continue down this road, um, we'll continue to make sure that we're putting the safety of, of all of our staff first and foremost, um, but also making sure that we are side by side with the communities that have the greatest need, like right here in Chimney Rock. Thanks, have a great weekend. Thank you, Administrator. Any additional questions from members of the media? Otherwise, I think we are good to drop. Seeing none, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your yeah. time. I think that's all we have for today. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you.